What's up guys, Ben here, bringing you another video today. I was gonna do a roster mania video, but right now it's a, it's a little bit slow. And I think when we get more roster updates tomorrow, I'll do sort of a react to the Crowan article with sort of updates as he adds those in. But guys, this morning, right before I was gonna record this video, Jacob Halo DeSerto came out with an article with a leaked Call of Duty League 2023 schedule. And I wanna talk about with y'all, walk it through, get you some of my thoughts based on some of the knowledge I have and what I think about the schedule. Let's dive in. Right, so here is a schedule in the DeSerto article. We'll obviously link it in the description so you guys can read through some of the text. It is a leaked document and looks pretty authentic to me based on what I've seen in the past. I think the biggest thing that stands out for me right away is the season is starting super early. We have major one qualifiers beginning the first week of December, leading into the first tournament, which will be the last week before Christmas. And the biggest thing is that majors are pro-am. Right in the mix, we are getting into a pro-am with the first tournament that would replace sort of kickoff classic. Personally for me, as much as I like kickoff classic and for having a preseason event, like having an old school CW all style event, which is probably what they're going for in this pro-am tournament, is sort of the best way to kick off a season. Really good for amateur players trying to crack in the league, really good for teams trying to figure out if the rosters are good or not. I just like the fact that we're not waiting until say the last week of January or first week of February to get the season going. The game's gonna come out the end of October and teams are legit gonna have like five or six weeks to really figure their thing out before the major. So a lot of that practice is gonna be super key and we will see who gets ahead early based on this tournament. And on top of that, my last final thing is by doing a pro-am, for those pro teams, you're going to get a lot of footage and knowledge of your team early because a pro-am format is going to have more games you would have than a kickoff classic. So a lot of activity, a lot of opportunity for teams to know where they stack relative to the competition. I saw on Twitter as well that Jacob Hale pointed out that the major one would be on the same weekend as the World Cup final. So if you're worried a little bit about viewership there, there might obviously be some esports collision. I'm actually not worried about the World Cup final because I just looked it up and it looks like that final is actually going to be in the morning. So knowing kind of how these tournaments work, you will have a lot of matches on Championship Sunday. So the final is not really going to be till 6 or 7 p.m. anyway. So overall, I like the Major One tournament being the last week before Christmas. People were out of school. It gives the teams enough time to practice. We're getting an early tournament. We've been asking for this for years. We're finally getting it. I like it. A couple of big key takeaways taking a look at the schedule. Obviously, one less tournament than last year with the removal of Kickoff Classic. But in exchange, we get five majors. Interestingly enough, the first event is a LAN hosted event by the league. But it looks like where the team hosted events are coming back. Curious to see where we're going. I would love to see us go back to Toronto and New York. Those were really great events to end off the season. My guess is we'll probably get a Dallas event. Surely, right? Get an ESA event. I mean, Dallas event was also a banger for viewership and for attendance we'll see who actually end up hosting these teams if we get some new ones i think that'd be really cool like there are cities we haven't been to yet like boston we haven't been back to florida a while in call of duty obviously would love to see a london event if we get that this year that would be an absolute banger so we'll have to wait and see what some of these team uh, hosted event locations look like. And those are pretty good in terms of dates. So not a big gap between major one and major two. We get a couple of weeks off for the holidays, but we're back into it by the first week of February. And then a quick turnaround, the next major is the second week in March. Fourth event will be the second to last weekend in April. So a little bit of a break in between major three and major four, but it's only a couple of weeks, not too bad. Quick turnaround into the last major of the season. So this will be sort of the run in for teams to qualify for champs. Again, we're assuming same champs format as last year, because we haven't heard otherwise. And then champs, actually way early in the season. So two years ago, it was the end of August. This year it was the beginning of August. And now we moved it all the way to the middle of June. Personally, I kind of like the season being shorter. I'm not a fan of really long esports seasons. It's just hard to just get that attention for like eight or nine months. So this sort of season of like seven and a half to eight months is kind of perfect. It gives teams also a really nice off season. Like if you think about what COD right now, the season ended in the beginning of August. Roster Mania ran pretty much or is still in the process of running pretty much through the end of August. And then you really only get like six weeks off to take a vacation, come back, get back up to speed. Now I think assuming that they'll start again earlier next year, cause there's no game release they have to wait for it, theoretically. I think you can give a nice off season to the players to actually like plan a vacation, do life stuff do your weddings, etc. Obviously another big takeaway here is the, uh, looks like the online qualifiers are currently coming back. I've talked about this a bit on my stream. Like, yes, I would love to see a land league. And I guess there's still the possibility that the location on this could change, but obviously land league comes with additional costs. There are obviously teams from my understanding that do not want to go to a land league because it's a lot of commitment on time, which is interesting, but I think it's sort of a necessary evil of the world we live in that. At the moment, they're gonna have to mix online and land competition, but the land competition is sort of the most important. I know the online stuff still gives you points, but I think at the moment, unless all the teams are down to do a land league, and obviously with the regionality of Call of Duty League, this gets a little bit complicated and where that land competition is for the qualifiers. I think we're just gonna have to live with a lot of this online competition. A couple of other things of note, looks like we're still sticking with the four day tournament format. So as you see Thursday, Sunday for the majors, 
as well as champs. And we're sticking with Friday, Sunday again for the league matches. I think that was a good change last season. The second year of the Call of Duty League for the online competition, again, this was during COVID. They went with a Thursday, Sunday schedule, short matches on Thursday, Friday, and a longer schedule on the weekend. I like the more condensed three-day schedule. It's less broadcast days. Like you get into this sort of grind with some of these matches on Friday that are kind of a little bit eh. So I like that we're sticking with that format. The nice also thing with the season being earlier is you kind of avoid some of the viewership drag the CDL dealt with this year. Like you were still playing online matches in June and people were kind of out of school and doing other things at that point. So it's hard to get their attention. So your last week of le league online qualifier matches are going to be the second last week of May. So kind of around finals week, sort of right on the cusp on when people would sort of sag off of watching that viewership. But I think it's actually a good change because you're really not having that online activity drag, drag into June. Instead, you're kind of done by May and then we have tournaments. Another another thing is while we look at the bye week between major five bracket tournament and champs, we're not going to have a month off. It looks like essentially it's three weeks if you're counting the week of the event. So a short opportunity for teams to adjust coming out of the last tournament of the season, but it's not going to be some super long break in between all of that activity. I think if you're a challengers player, five majors likely means five open tournaments. So that's pretty good. And then a champs event. So you're pretty much guaranteed at least, assuming that obviously there are challengers events at all of these majors, you're guaranteed at least six lands for challengers and you get a pro in the beginning of the season. So I'm curious how that program is going to work. I determine what challengers teams are going to make it into that major. Is there's going to have to be some kind of online activity that's sort of a driver to that. So you're going to have to cram that somewhere into November and the beginning of December. The two weeks of qualifiers before the first major is interesting. I'm curious what that looks like from a format perspective. It obviously also assumes that the game is in a really good state before the first event. If not, they're going to have to probably tweak this. This is something to watch as we get closer to the game launch and get more clarity on how it's going to look the first couple of weeks. Also missing from here is anything about an all-star thing, but personally, like I wasn't a super fan of the 1v1 all-star tournament. It sort of like dragged on. You could probably squeeze it into one of these events, honestly. So I'll to see more clarity on how they're gonna continue that. And I think, look, for pro teams, it's now going to make that first couple of weeks super key. Cause the last couple of years, you've been able to sort of pace it over three months before the first event. But now, now we're getting to the point where the game's gonna launch at the end of October. You're probably gonna start scrims a week or two after that. And you legitimately have a month, maybe five weeks, weeks of practice before the first event. So really making the most of that time and getting ahead is super critical. We may see some surprise teams fall behind. And with it being a pro-am tournament, teams might early panic button before the, during that three week break. And we might see some challengers sneak into the CDL a little bit earlier than we've expected the last few years, which has normally been after major two, major three in sort of February, March. We can see some roster changes like literally before the end of 2022, which would be wild. Guys, one more thought as well here, not to keep the video going, but it just sort of occurred to me. I'm very curious what the qualifiers format looks like, right? The last couple of years, they've done these sort of group stage formats, and I don't think they've sort of hit in the way they need to, especially as you get the end of the season. So I'm very curious if they're going to look at something we've seen in like other esports like Halo, and maybe you sort of go with more bracket style qualifiers. I know it doesn't guarantee teams as many games as it would in a group stage format, but I think it's a little bit more exciting for fans and a little bit more better for viewership. Nothing seems really clear from this on what that format is, and we'll look forward to an announcement from the league. But I would like to assume, especially with the two week qualifiers before Major One, that they may be doing a little bit more experimentation this year so let's be on the lookout for that that's my reaction guys like let me know what you think do you like this schedule i mean personally i like the season starting earlier and ending earlier but i'm curious what you guys think let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see out of the schedule as always smash that like button and if you like my content please subscribe we're gonna keep pumping out stuff non-stop every day for you guys on all things call of duty we're gonna have interviews coming soon so be on the lookout for that and as always guys we will see you on the next one